cartel of the tape in this matchup in the middleweight division brought to you by General Tire. Obviously, the elder would be Melvin Costa. Melvin brings heavy hands, but Daniel Madrid claims that he has not fought a fighter like him before. We will see about that. But before we do, we'll throw it to the veteran voice of the cage, Dean Stone. Here it is, Daniel Blackout Madrid. Well, Daniel Madrid, 6-3, 12 wins, four losses in his mixed martial arts career. And he says that this is his toughest fight to date, fighting Melvin Costa. And I, I, I say that's a lot of respect being thrown to Costa, because Costa, uh, he's got a chin, man. And he will keep coming at you unless you have an ax well, or a gun. Well, guys, he has, I believe, seven wins by submission. So I don't believe he is, he's gonna trade with Melvin. When he says Melvin's never fought a fighter like him, it might be the other way around. He's never fought a fighter like Melvin. Clearly, when you win your fights on the ground, you're not, your pedigree isn't on your feet. Right, but you look at his kickboxing during that uh, little interview, he's worked on that. Yeah. And some guys make a mistake when they try and go to the well with something new and get away from what they're experienced at. Very, very good point, but I, Hey, you, you, are you telling me right now that you think he's going to try to trade with Melvin right I now? hope he doesn't, because Melvin might knock him out. Oh, my does God. That, does the pride sometimes get the best of the fighter when they're like, I want to stand because I want to show everybody I every want to stand? Time, every time. Every bro. time. Are you kidding me? Yes. <laughs> Until you get cracked in the grill. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's a Well, a quick guy. look at our fighter, Daniel Blackout Madrid. He's fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona. He started martial arts at the age of 14. Got that Dutch kickboxing in his background and, of course, then transferred over to Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And, man, Having a brown belt is not an easy thing to do. It takes years of practice, and it takes a lot of commitment. And we're to get, go ahead and get Melvin Costa out here. We're going to go ahead and throw it to Dean Stone. Introducing Melvin, man of war, Costa. You know, Melvin Costa has got to be one of my favorite fighters in the world because he's got character, he's a funny guy, and you know, that laugh is so evil, it resonates in your ears. Are you kidding? Did you just watch him walk out? Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is the old Melvin. Yes. This is the Melvin, this is Melvin. This is, this is what I wanna see. You guys, I, we've been commentating Melvin's last few fights, and he's matured. Coming off, yeah, and coming off uh, three straight losses. I mean, what does that do for him? Does that give him, like, I've got nothing to lose? It's going to be, First you know? of all, I know how that feels. I've lost five in a row. It was horrible luck, and it's horrible. It just goes and goes, and you don't want that. And that intensity, I doubt I ever had that. Look at Melvin's intensity right now. Well, he comes out to bang. You know, his striking has gotten a lot better. He used to be a straight-up street fighter. But all he needs to really do is move his head, angle out a little bit, and guys are gonna have a really, really difficult time with him. But he needs to stay on his feet. If he ends up going to the ground with Daniel, it's not gonna last long. You know, I had a chance to walk down the hallway and I saw Melvin Costa this morning and he looked at me, hugged me so hard that his shoulder almost knocked me out by knocking my chin. This guy is pumped and he was just yelling down the hallways. I mean, that's a creepy sight. <laughs> He's in the zone right now. It's, it's his zone. It looks like a little bit of an older Melvin, a Melvin that I'm not used to seeing in the recent days. Um, and a Melvin that right now has got me sweating under my suit jacket. Yeah, Acosta, or Acosta, an angry Costa is a scary Costa. And we've seen those fights uh, previously, Sean, back in the day. Yeah, he comes out and he brings it. And he's not just trying to intimidate guys when he wants to bang. Yeah. He comes out, he ate leather in his last fight. And he just was kept coming and coming and coming. He's really, really it difficult to like put away. He wants to now give some leather. And it looks like Melvin might try to accost Daniel's face. Yeah, that is a scary individual. That's not big. No. Nice. That is pure passion. And that's why we love this sport. Well, a quick look at Melvin Man of War Costa. He's fighting out of Palm Springs, and he has developed over time. He had a great stand-up. He was a street brawler. He's developed. He's polished his jiu-jitsu. And, you know, he's got eight KOs under his win. So I'm anticipating this matchup between these two guys in the middleweight division. And before we get things started, we'll go ahead and throw it to the veteran voice of the cage, Dean Stone. Ladies and gentlemen, from Talking Stick Resort, Scottsdale, Arizona, King of the Cage and Lucas Oil present this three-round bout in the middleweight division. 
your referee in charge of the action, Al Gagne. Introducing first, in the Lucas Oil Blue Corner, standing six feet three inches tall, official weight 184.8 pounds. He represents Grace Fighting Systems. Ladies and gentlemen, from Glendale, Arizona, presenting Daniel Lockout Madrid. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of the Lucas Oil Red Corner, stands at six feet tall. Official weight, 183.7 pounds. He represents hand-to-hand -hand MMA and Palm Springs Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Ladies and gentlemen, from Yucca Valley, California, presenting Melvin, Man of War, Costa. Once again, your referee in charge, Al Gaini, for the final instructions, three rounds of middleweight action scheduled. Gentlemen, we've been over the rules. Let's have a good, clean fight. Touch gloves if you want to. Go back to your corners. Come out fighting. And here we go. This matchup scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Melvin, man of war, Casa gets set to take on Daniel Blackout Madrid. Here we go, guys. Do not close your eyes. Do not go to the bathroom right now, guys. I know it's been a great fight, a uh, great night of fights, um, but it's not going to slow down right now. Well, one thing out of the gate, uh, Man of War is circling to his right, moving the right direction, moving his head, changing elevation, checking kicks, looking nice at this point right now. I think he's waiting to throw that right hand. Look how it's glued to his face. He's he, he's getting the zone. Daniel, there's no there's no question that Daniel wants to close the gap and get a hold. He's going to stay on the outside and make Melvin overcommit. And then when he overcommits, he's going to jump back in, I think, and initiate the grappling. I have to say that over the years, Melvin Costa has really polished his boxing skills a lot cleaner as the years have gone by. And that's what makes him such a dangerous opponent. You notice how both of these fighters are in a lull position where they're both jumping into their to their attacks. Right, and that leg kick just hurt Melvin Costa, though. You can't take too many of those. This, this fight is going to be ended in you cannot really turn away from this fight. Both of these fighters right now, you have the ability to finish this fight on the ground and on its feet at any time. And a nice kick delivered to the dome of Melvin Costa by Madrid. I'm not a big fan of leading with a with a roundhouse. I think you got to set it up with your hands first um, because it can get you caught with like an overhand right, which um, I would not be surprised if either one of these guys threw an overhand right to counter that inside leg kick. Well, Melvin Costa with three or four wicked inside leg kicks. Ooh. That one was checked nicely by uh, Daniel Madrid. After you get a couple couple leg kicks in, I think you can start feigning them, doing the Superman, doing the the uh, the switch kick to the right hand, things like that. Really, it's all about disorientating your opponent, not letting him know what you're going to do. Look at that nice little double jab to get in there. Um, Melvin's giving up reach clearly. We can see this right now. He's giving up reach, but the way he's over uh, he's compensating with that is doubling up with his jab. You'll notice when, when he doesn't lead with a kick, he'll double up with that jab so he can get a little closer. And shortly after that, we're going to see a right hand. Yeah, Melvin looking good, getting more and more comfortable, but he needs to get those hands up, let me tell you. Because you don't want to mess around with Daniel Madrid. I don't know. Oh, that's humbling right there. Yeah, it's being spun around, but Melvin's got so much um, I think adrenaline going through him right now over everything that's gone. Oh, nice. Oh, rocks him a bit, but Melvin oh. Costa turns it up, and Madrid takes it to the ground with a nice slam. Now, Melvin is able to get back to his feet, it looks almost. He, he did a great job of not staying down. Now, spin out and try to get to the cage. Oh. Melvin was really hurt by that straight right, boy. I'll tell you what, he had his hands down and ate a monster straight right by Daniel Madrid. He's just trying to lay there and get some bearings right now. Well, Melvin cannot give up his back here. You want to go turn flat to your back. If I'm Melvin, I want to go flat to my back, try to bring my left leg on the outside of the knee and recover half guard from this position. Oh, he's getting some good little hammer fists here. You got to be careful. The referee will stop it. but. That was one of the best reps out there. Madrid looking to just spread them out there, getting those hooks in, trying, and will he pull it off from this position, guys? 
it, it, it can be stopped at any time when you're in a rear naked choke because you can't see where the choke is being applied. Now the body triangle is being sunk in as well there. Which affects your kidneys, your liver, everything. It squeezes those internal organs. And when it's released, it releases toxins, kind of like the liver. Um, it, it stops you from breathing, can hurt your back, and allows you to really crank on the face. Why choke the neck when you can choke the face? Oh, uh, look, he's close to tapping out, guys. Can Melvin hang on? And no, Madrid comes out victorious here tonight via submission rear and naked choke. Guys, that was a Dan Severn finish, not the rear naked choke. And guess what? Dan Severn's here. Yeah, that's a monster win for Daniel Madrid. Let's take a look at this replay. Setting that up with the body triangle goes in there tight. Really restricting the breathing of Melvin Acosta, who is not even recovered at this point right now. Just waiting him out. That's the experience of a legitimate brown belt. Daniel Madrid just softening him up, knowing that Melvin Acosta's hurt. Cinching that in, getting tighter and tighter. And it's just a matter of time. And right there just taps the Dan Severn choke. And and how honorable is that that Dan Severn is here tonight being able to witness that? Yeah, that's incredible. You know, he brought so much to this sport and it, it seems like it's been a long time since he's fought, but guys are still using his maneuvers yeah, to finish you know, fights. The godfather of ground and pound is in the house tonight. And of course, all the fans are smothering him and loving him. How can you not? He's such a great guy. That's absolutely true. I'll tell you what, this was a great fight. These guys were battling back and forth with some really polished kickboxing. Melvin Costa let his hands down for one minute and ate a monster straight right, which completely changed this fight. Oh, obviously Melvin Costa just a little disappointed, but we're gonna go ahead and throw it to the cage to Dean Stone. Ladies and gentlemen, the official time comes at 3 minutes and 48 seconds of round number one. Your winner by tap out submission due to a rear naked choke, Daniel Blackout Madrid. Daniel, um, what a great fight. I'm gonna tell you something. Rarely do we get a chance to finish a fight with a submission where the guy is sitting. That was a Dan Severn finish to the, before transition, he tapped to the Dan Severn. Um, what do you, that was awesome, because he's right there. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, he's been one of my idols for a long time, um, along with the other greats, like uh, the greats like Hoist Gracie and whatnot, so it's a pleasure to get him to watch me fight, and I thank you. Now, now, the Dan Severn choke isn't isn't the RNC where you have the control of the bicep. It's where you control underneath yes. and you're choking. Were you? Did you think you were going to have to transition to the RNC, or did you know you had it? No, for a second I did think I was going to have to transition to it. Uh, I had that game. I knew it was underneath his throat. Um, he was he was surviving it for a couple seconds, so I was like, shit, I got to switch over. And then I just hit my hip, and he was just there. So. Okay. Well, guys, I'm going to send it back here to Steve. Thanks. Great fight today, guys. Thank you, sir. Can I say a couple words? Real quick, big shout out to my sponsors. Dream Team MMA, Beach Club Cantina, Buff Girl Problems, Grace Fighting Systems, and Novel Beach today. Thank you very much.